Welcome to the University of West London Signal Flow tutorial on the Audient ASP8024. In this video, we will be explaining signal flow, demonstrating how to connect a microphone, route the signal into a digital audio workstation, also known as a door, and then back to the master bus. For this tutorial, we will be using Pro Tools as our door. Signal flow is always linear. When signals are sent into the desk, they will follow a set path from the original sound source to coming out of the studio monitors. This is much like how a river flows from a source to its final destination. We will use this analogy throughout the video. Another way to help understand signal flow is to always follow the signal from output to input. For example, a signal flows out of a guitar into the input of an amplifier and then out as sound to a microphone. Thinking like this will help you troubleshoot, should any issues occur. Let's begin. When entering a studio, try to familiarise yourself with the layout. Do this by locating all of the hardware you need, such as the microphone ties, patch bays, rednet converters and the HDX bridge, as you will need them for this tutorial. The first thing to check when patching a signal is to make sure the cut button is engaged on the mixing console. This stops any signal being sent out of the console into the speakers. Tweeters are fragile, can be easily damaged, and this step will protect them. Now check that the phantom power is turned off on the channel you'll be using, and the input gain is turned down. Now we can move into the live room. Beginning with the microphone on the stand, connect the output of the XLR to a mic tie. Then run the cable to the base of the mic stand, leaving the excess at the bottom, and connect the output of the microphone to the input of the XLR. Running the cable like this will keep the studio tidy and safe. To complete this exercise, you will need a sound source. If you don't have a musician, you can use your phone to play music. With your sound source outputting sound, move back into the control room. On the patch bay, locate the output of the mic tie you're using. As this is an output, it will be found on the top row of the patch bay. In most scenarios, it will be normal to the mic preamp input on a corresponding channel on the mixing console. If you're using a condenser microphone, turn on phantom power at this point. Now apply gain to the mic preamp and see if the signal is being shown on the mic line indicator light. If your sound source is quiet, you may have to turn the gain pot up to two or three o'clock. If there is no metering, Check that the line input and insert path are not engaged. To show more detailed metering, engage the MTR button. This displays the signal from the preamp on the bar graph meter. Ideally, at this point, the meter should be averaging around 0 VU, as this is the optimal gain level for using studio hardware. The metering tells us that the signal flow up to this point is correct. If you are not getting any metering after following these steps, then there may be an issue with one of the pieces of equipment. Going back to the river analogy, this would cause a dam, resulting in the signal no longer flowing past that point. Now we want to have a listen to check the signal. Engage the mix button on the channel path and turn up the channel fader, also known as the short fader. This will route the signal to the mix bus. Turn up the master fader for the mix bus. You should now see metering on your mix bus meters. Make sure the monitor volume pots are turned down and then turn off the cut button. Now slowly turn your selected monitor volume pot up. If you have to turn the volume pot up past 11, then there is likely an issue with your levels. Check the mix bus meters are showing a healthy level. Now you are ready to send the signal to your door. Turn the monitor pot back down, re-engage the cut button and disengage the mix button of the short fader. By doing this, the signal is taken back out of the mix bus as we only want to be monitoring the signal after the door on the long fader. From here, we will use the routing matrix to send the signal to the multi-track bus outputs. The multi-track bus outputs are used to send the signal to the patch bay where they're normal to the input of the converters. They do not route the signal across channels and are not linked to specific numbers. For example, we have our mic coming in on channel 1, but we're going to route it out of multi-track bus output 3. We're doing this in order to showcase the route the signal can take. In a practical scenario, you will likely use all these actions on a single channel path. 
Now you should see metering on the corresponding meter of the converter. If you do not see metering on the input to the converter, check that the LF source button is not engaged and that the short fader is still turned up. From the converter, the signal is routed into the RedNet5 HDX bridge. Check the sample rates on both devices match, as we are now dealing with digital audio. If needed, use the RedNet Control 2 application on the computer to set the sample rates to match your door. As the RedNets are network audio devices using the Dante protocol, the routing between them are managed by Dante Network Controller. Open Dante Controller to check the routing between the devices are correct. If it doesn't look as shown on screen, please see our Configuring Dante Devices video. You should see metering on the corresponding channels on both the RedNet Converter and the RedNet5 HDX bridge. The signal is passed out the RedNet5 to the Avid HDX sound card. Open Pro Tools and create a new session, making sure the sample rates match the RedNet devices and select Stereo Mix from the I.O. settings from the drop-down menu. Go to Playback Engine and check that the HDX sound card is selected. Double-check the location you're saving your session in. It should be saved in either audio data or studio data. Never save your work to the desktop. Create a new mono audio track within Pro Tools and use the Audio Input Path Selector to select Input A3. Note here that although the microphone signal is entering on channel 1 of the console, the signal is being routed to the input 3 of the converters, as we use multibus output 3 on the desk. This results with the signal entering the door through input path 3. Set the output path to the corresponding channel on the mixing console tape inputs. We're going to route the signal to tape input 5. Now record enable your audio track in Pro Tools, which should give you metering on the audio track. The signal is now passed out of Pro Tools, back to the Avid HDX sound card, then into the RedNet5 HDX bridge. This is then routed to the RedNet digital to analog converter appearing on the patch bay, normalised to the tape inputs of the mixing console. There should now be metering on the corresponding tape input. Use the MTR button to flip between the indicator and the bar graph meter for a more detailed metering. If you are seeing output metering on the converter, but no metering on the tape input, check the insert button is not engaged. Use your tape trims to adjust your level. Engage the mix button of the long fader and turn it up. Checking the master fader is turned up, you should now see metering on your mix bus. With the monitor pot turned all the way down, take the cut off and slowly turn up the monitor pot. Congratulations! You have routed a signal in and back out of Pro Tools. You are now ready to record your work.